This is Anton Largedare with the Virginia Motorrad, and we're going to look at some so-called hex head final drives. I was asked to look into the differences between the newer style vented final drives and the older unvented ones for a possible uh, gear swap. And so I ended up pulling them apart and doing some comparisons. This is the older style final drive that was basically produced up until 2010. And the vented final drive here is the 2010 and later. And the only visible difference really is that you can see the vent pointing forward on this. But venting isn't really the difference between them. Uh, the big differences are internal. The venting, I think, is a byproduct of the fact that the bearing got moved into the oil bath. So we're going to look at the, the cover, which is where the real differences are. And, and you can see how the design changed in 2010. Here's a typical uh, non-vented early style final drive cover and you can see here this is the inside facing the gear oil and here is the seal on the inside and then the bearing that supports the ring gear is on the outside and it lives in its own lubrication bath that does not share the gear oil in those earlier designs. When the ring gear and the axle, it's one assembly, are installed onto the, um, into the cover. This black plastic uh, ring guides the lip of the seal up and over, and you can see that the seal actually rides on this metal surface in here. And in fact, the face of the ring gear is even undercut to allow more room for that seal. So this presses on, the seal there rides up on this lip, that keeps the oil from there back, the bearing sits on the outside. If you look at the newer style cover, this is the oily side, and you can see the bearing is non-shielded, and it lives in the gear oil and the seal is on the outside. There's a seal ring which goes on after the bearing is pressed on. It's pressed into the bearing much the way the old one was except now there's no seal on the inside. And then after that the seal ring goes on and the seal ring has a step here with a rubber o-ring and a plastic compression ring and when it's installed that seals the inside of this seal ring to the axle. In fact you can even see this little dark line here which is where the o-ring uh, seals that off. So that o-ring seals the oil between the axle and the seal ring and then the seal ring rides inside this seal that's on the outside of the final drive and that's how the oil stays in and again critical point is that the uh, the bearing is inside the seal riding in the oil bath so what are the geometric differences between these two well starting with the fact that we don't have a seal on the inside anymore on the new design we don't need we don't need some of this material here in fact, you can see there's basically a big empty space where that seal used to be. And they actually trimmed some of this face down because it's not needed for supporting the seal anymore like it is on the old one. On the other side, where they added the seal, you can see that the new style final drive sticks out considerably farther than the old one because they had to make room for that seal holder on the outside. So let's look at how this impacts the stack up of all the components on the outside. On the old style final drive, pretend the cover's on there already, you have this 
this spacer ring, which is basically this dust shield. The purpose of the dust shield is that it sits in this opening here and protects the face of that bearing from debris, keeps it cleaner. So the dust shield sits on here after the bearing. And then the wheel flange itself presses on up to that point there, and then the circlip goes after that. The numbers are a bit different on the new final drive. This part here is 15 millimeters across on the old one. On the new final drive, the seal ring is only 12 millimeters across. So the distance between where the bearing presses on on the old one and where the bearing presses on on the new one is now three millimeters less. Let me just throw in a note here that reminds us how we got to, this, to these dimensions. This is how the wheel carriers used to look. This is, this is the old aluminum one. And so the bearing comes up to about here, the bearing that's in the cover, and this pressed on all the way up to there, and it took up all of the space between the bearing and where the circlip goes on the end. This part here had this same lip that's on this seal, on this, on this dust shield, even though it's missing from this particular one. And when they changed to the steel carrier, it was a lot narrower, and so they added a separate piece that carried the dust shield. When they designed this part, they were, al they were already using this design, and they didn't need as much space anymore. All this was doing was taking up the same space that the old aluminum carrier used to use up. So they reduced it as much as they could, the bearing is the same width as it is on the old one, but the seal ring is smaller. What that would normally do would be it would allow the bearing to get uh, three millimeters uh, closer to, to the end. But what BMW did, and you can see it in this housing, they actually moved the position of the bearing five millimeters to the outside. So on this one, it's about two and a half millimeters on this side of the mating surface of the cover and case. But on the new design, it's about two and a half millimeters on that side of the mating cover, um, the mating surface between the cover and the case. The incompatibility that this repositioning of everything makes with the axle basically dictates that you can't use a new style cover if you happen to find one on your old axle. Because the old axle here has splines that are about 45 millimeters deep. The bearing went here, the seal was on the inside, the original aluminum flange was fully splined and it needed the splines that went all the way up to here. When BMW changed designs to the new steel flange, they didn't change that because there was no need to. But when BMW redesigned the assembly for the external seal, they needed a sealing surface that was farther out for this seal ring to ride on and to be able to seal off to the um, to the axle. And so you can, you can visualize that if this seal ring sits about here, if you try to do that on this one, it's going to sit about here, and the rubber o-ring that seals this to the axle isn't going to be able to seal because these splines are too long. So here we have the main components of the new style vented final drive. Unfortunately, the cross compatibility with the old style is pretty much non-existent, uh, unfortunately for the customer who had me look into this. 
but the new style is definitely better. And if you're having an expensive issue with your unvented final drive and your cover on your unvented final drive has the, uh, the same sensor bore as it does uh, on the vented one, the vented one is a great upgrade because it's much more robust. It has a slightly wider track between between the, the roller bearing and the ball bearing, which I explained by how they, uh, how they move that bearing outboard. The bearing lives in the oil bath. That is the most significant change. And of course, it's vented, so any pressure that builds up inside is not gonna look for a leak path. It's just gonna go out the vent. Hope that answers a few questions, and I'll be happy to answer any in the comments.